friends, Kim from Stamping in Perfection. Thank you for joining me today. I am participating in the Shop Your Stash Monster Mash. This is a hashtag driven YouTube hop. So if you want to see the rest of the videos in the hop, just type hashtag Shop Your Stash Monster Mash, all one word, in the search bar and YouTube will generate a playlist for you that you can save on your YouTube channel and um, participate in the hop. So two requirements for today. One was that we use some monsters in our projects and um, sh that we shop our stash and that we use a little bit of purple and black. So I am using this Squad Ghoul stamp set that I got from Catherine Pooler and I've had in my stash for um, a few months since she released it and I have not had a chance to play with it so I'm going to play with that today. I'm also going to play with some stencils because we have a sponsor today and the sponsor for the hop is a Colorful Life Designs because you have a chance to win a $30 gift card to a Colorful Life Designs. One lucky winner will be selected to receive the $30 gift card. I'll put all the details below. Um, but these stencils came from their shop and um, you need to leave comments by the way on the, the YouTube videos in order to um, participate in that giveaway. So I have four stencils. This is the wavy web. Then I have this um, buzzard tree. This is a stamp and a mask. I'm going to use both of these pieces today. I also have the bat flight and then the webby, um, the webby, what was it called? Frame that I will also be using. So I'm just starting off, I'm going to stamp a whole bunch of these little monsters because I need monsters and ghosts and things for my projects. And I actually have two cards and two quick little uh, projects that you can make really quickly if you just want a little something to uh, give a co-worker or um, you're having a get together or something and you want something fun. Like these are just little fun ideas. Um, so I'm going to, I'm just Stamping these first in my, this is my Maker Forte Color Hive Black Ink, my favorite black ink to use when I'm Copic coloring. I love this ink. I get beautiful impressions, even on watercolor paper, it's amazing. So I am going to color all of these in with my Copics, and I'm not going to spend um, too much of the video showing you coloring because um, I want to show you the projects. And I will include all of the colors that I used on my blog at stampingimperfection.com. So here I used some yellows, Y19, Y13, and Y11. And I'm using my purples. I'm using BV08, 04, 02, and 00. And generally when I color, I start with the darkest and go toward the lightest. That's um, the thing I'm most comfortable doing. Um, I find it easier to get my lighter highlights in if I do it that way. So I start with the darkest and then I go over it with my next, um, like the next lightest color and I just keep working my way lighter and lighter. And each time I pick up a new marker I go over what I just did and then fill in a little bit more of the image till I get to the lightest color and just fill in the rest. And then I give that image some time to dry because the colors need time to play together and and dry together before you can start judging your image there. So I'm going to go ahead and color in all of the rest of these and then I'm going to die cut them out and I just wanted to show you a little bit of this one. I wanted this one to look a little bit fluffy so I'm flicking the color in and when I get to my second color and again this is my darkest color this is G19 I'll use G16, G14, and G12 also and I just start with the next color and I'm flicking sort of in all different directions so that um, in the end he'll have a little bit of a fluffy look. I love coloring in little monsters because you know what? They, it's okay for them to look a little raggedy. So here's the buzzard tree stencil and I love this image. We actually have had a bunch of vultures flying around our house over the winter and one of them landed on the roof of our house and it, I swear to you it sounded like something fell out of the sky and landed on my roof and then it started walking around and it was 
like a herd of elephants was stomping. It, it was crazy. It was huge, the, the, the vulture. So I am coloring this in with black soot distress oxide. And once I got that done, I covered it with the mask. Now it would be nice to use if you have pixie spray or something like that to spray that on the back of your mask and that will hold it down nicely. I instead use magnets because I'm allergic to adhesive and I don't want to breathe that in. So I believe this is seedless preserves and um, I'm just going over this mask and I'm holding it down very carefully because I couldn't use anything like pixie spray. So I move the magnets around as I do this and just try to hold the edges so I get a nice blend and I you know don't mess it up too much by bending the stencil back. I love that the mask was included with this stencil because you can do things like this and this is protecting what I just actually colored in with that black soot. So I'm kind of just um, twisting it as I'm going around the edges so I don't like brush back and forth. I'm just giving it a twist around the edges of the stencil and then I am going to add a little bit of, I think it's hickory smoke next. But first I'm just going to darken up that, I put the stencil back on just so I can darken up my original black soot. And this is hickory smoke distress oxide and I'm just going to put this around the edge. And yes, I will go over the black a little bit. I could have put the mask down. Um, but I decided I can just go back over that with the stencil and I'm adding a little bit of the hickory smoke and I'm just sort of blending it in with that purple and then I'm going to take the black soot and that around add that around the edges and the corners. I really like a dark edge and then I'm going to take that um, purple and blend all of these colors together so I have a nice smooth blend. You, and you know when you're blending just keep blending until you're happy with your blend like that's how I do it so I'll put that mask the stencil the original stencil back on one more time just to brighten and darken up my tree and buzzard and I like the way this came out and I was going to put some monsters on that but that does not have the same feel as the monsters the monsters are kind of playful the vault the buzzard tree is actually more of a scary image so I added a few bats from the bat flight stencil and again all the stencils that I'm using today are from a colorful life designs I wanted to try them out before I recommended them and now I can recommend them because I ordered four and I'm very happy with them so to um, make I'm making a little monster um, paper clip so I'm putting a, a large paper clip and I notice I have some foam inside that paper clip and I'm using foam for the other two pieces of the monster there and I just die cut a plain piece of um, white cardstock for the back of the monster and I will probably color that green later because that will show up. Here's what I use this for. I Every month I like to make a seasonal um, paper clip for my travelers notebook and um, I just tuck that in as a decoration I always think that's really fun so um, kids love those they make great bookmarks I also like to make little toothpick things so again I may I die cut an extra white backing and again I'll probably color the back of this one in orange and I just glue the two pieces around a toothpick and you can use this for all kinds of stuff you can use them for cupcake picks, you can use them for plant pokes, you know, all kinds of things that you can do. And um, you can make a whole bunch of them if you're having a get together and stick them in your cupcakes or whatever hors d'oeuvres or whatever you have going on. Those are fun little projects to do around the holidays. So this is the Webby Frame stencil from A Colorful Life Designs. And um, I actually really like, I just got this Wendy Vecchi art station. I really like these. If you use all four of those magnets, they do work really well. So um, 
just keep that in mind. This is the weathered wood color from D the Distressed Oxide line, and I'm just filling in the center. I'm trying to keep the center a little bit lighter than the outside, and I thought this was more playful for a background for those monsters, so that's why I chose that. Now I am using a piece of black cardstock cut at four and a quarter by 11. I scored it at five and a half. The purple layer is cut at four and one eighths by five and three eighths, and then my web front piece is cut at four by five and a quarter. I'm just gluing all of those together with some art glitter glue. I like the liquid glue. It does not have a lot of play time though, that art glitter glue. Now I'm going to put some foam tape on the back of all of these little critters and then I'm going to go ahead and build my scene and I've got these little little gem spiders that I've had in my stash for a couple of years. These are from Doodlebug Designs. I don't know if they're still available, but they're in my stash and I bet that you have things in your stash like this that you could use on projects. So pull that stuff out now, friends. Now is a time to use it. Like, don't let that build up. Go ahead and use it. I'm giving you permission to use all the, those little goodies in your stash for things just like this. So I'm going to put that aside for a couple minutes. I need to put a sentiment on it and then I'm going to call that card done. I think it's super playful and kind of fun so I'll send that to someone who's a lot of fun. I did pull out some wiggly eyes and at this moment I decided oh no gotta have some wiggly eyes because of course if you're like me you have a couple packages of wiggly eyes in your stash so I'm using them. These got these kinds of things got used a lot more when my children were little but they're not little anymore so you know um, they haven't been used in a while and uh, now I'm using them and I will send them to one of my friends who is very young at heart. So I'm just adding some of these little wiggly eyes. It makes them more fun. Like the monsters are fun to begin with because they're adorable, but the wiggly eyes just help. A little interactive bit on your card is a good thing. I also have some of those wobbly things and I contemplated making one of these guys wobbly, but then I forgot to use it at the end. So I'm going to add a... Um, a, one of the little eyes to the monster on the clip but not on the toothpick because if I end up using that for a cupcake for my husband I don't want him to swallow a wiggly eye that would be terrible so I let that ink dry there was a lot of ink on there when I got done ink blending now I want to put some white splatter so I'm using white gouache that I spritzed with water and I'm just using a round paintbrush this is a number four and I pick up quite a bit of that I just roll my round paint brush tip in there and then I just tap it over my finger to get the splatter and I wanted a lot of splatter that was my goal so I have these cut apart sentiment strips that I love from Maker Forte. They're called All Season Sentiments. So I cut a couple of these for the two cards that I made. You are my favorite monster. And I forget what this one is, but it was a really good, oh, something wicked this way comes. That was so perfect for that. So that completes my two cards. Super simple. It my, completes my traveler's notebook clip. And maybe I'll buy myself a cupcake at, at the bakery and use that, that poke for in a cupcake just for me. I deserve one. I would love it if you gave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel while you're here. And if you um, make sure you leave a comment below for a chance to win that $30 gift card. Thanks for watching friends.